The following episode features discussions about incest and sexual abuse. Listener discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Tuesday, which means we're back to Dark Side of the Ring. This episode was uh, not even a bit rough. It was rough. Um, In the shadow of Grizzly Smith, which... Until yesterday, or the announcement of this season, didn't even know who Grizzly Smith was. For good reason, apparently. And this just could be why people don't talk about him, because they always say, if you don't have anything good to say, yeah, don't say it at all. Um, but we're back here, Doc and Prof. Prof, before we jump into this Grizzly Bear. I just want you- people to know... I told Doc I was going to tell him anything about this episode. I was going to no. tell him anything about this person. This is his raw reaction. Yeah, to that whole thing. This is pretty rough. This is like I didn't talk to the, I didn't talk to you. I didn't talk to anybody else about it. I listened to it and I watched it yesterday, and I was just like, "Oh my goodness!" It, but it wasn't just. It wasn't just the learning of the inc- not in oh, I mean, guess it would be incest of the the, uh, the pedophilia yep but it was also this i guess this grizzly smith tree um which you know i'm glad they touched on that but before we jump into that i mean how are you doing though you know i'm feeling pretty good man like i had a little pep in my step a little earlier and I was excited to hear what Doc had to say about this episode and I'm also really happy that I got reads like a library as Doc <laughs> like to say in, oh in, in regards to a certain playoff series because uh, he asked if it was going to get tied up to, uh, yesterday and I said yeah it's going to get tied up what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> well we'll definitely get to that tomorrow uh, and give it its due time it looks like there was a claw and a favor done. I don't know. Um, but we'll talk about it tomorrow. Something about posters, but we'll get there. Um, but in the shadow of Grizzly Smith, we're talking about pedophilia, incest, kidnapping, drugs, alcohol, and above, I guess what's supposed to be the most important, wrestling, <laughs> which is crazy because it's like, dark side outside the ring is what this should have been but i digress so let's let's dive into this man because this was wild i love how first and foremost which is really smart on their part you put jake the snake on the cover of it you know just to tie him in but it's really like grizzly smith was his own person so at first as a guy who doesn't know who grizzly smith is i immediately thought Hey, maybe Grizzly Smith was like a original name for Jake the Snake. That's my initial mind going in because the way they drew this up, you would think that maybe Jake the Snake had another character prior to him becoming Jake the Snake. So I'm thinking that. Uh, but then they start talking about this ginormous man, um, Grizzly feet Smith. Tall. Yeah. He's Kefe, seven feet tall, Kefe, like six, yeah. eight, six, nine. I think it's a 610 here. Yeah. Um, never heard of Rock and Robin. Never heard of the other people. You, you've, you've heard of Rock and Robin. It's just. Uh, okay. At, at yeah. the time, you know, sure. it wasn't really being featured, but like. Okay. Never, Maybe never I. So, like, past like WWE slash F uh, female wrestlers, she's usually one of the ones out there that they're showing. Uh, gotcha. They're usually showing more Cindy Lauper. Got it. Yeah. It's around that time. Okay, that makes sense then. I mean, again, I'm not the historian that Prof is, and I don't claim to be. Um, But this ginormous man standing at, we'll say, between 6'8 to 6'10. Big, tough guy. I mean, obviously, he's a big draw. Um, You know, you don't really have too many giants, I guess, at this particular time. Maybe uh, one of a very few in that crowd that actually want to most of them go and become bartenders or bouncers or, you know, work at a club, I guess, throwing people out. 
uh, mm-hmm. somebody discovered Mr. Smith here and brought him into the squared circle uh, where he dominated a little bit. However, people started noticing that he hung around with little girls. Now, my thing was, it's like, nobody gonna, I mean, I know he's he's big, you know, and maybe people were intimidated, I guess. Had that been, I'm trying to give them an excuse here, because that's the only excuse there's, I can come up no with. Excuse. No, they, they turned the blind eye, and they essentially, it was a laughing point. It was, <laughs> and, and it shouldn't have been. Yeah. And it shouldn't have been. And it, you know, spoke to how the mindset was back then. Right. Where, you know, something as horrific as this, uh, and we'll get into some of the key points and we're not trying to get any type of monetization or anything like that. So uh, if you're, you know, under the age of 18 and you're, you know, highly influential, please, you know, take this episode and listen to it with the most extreme caution. Yeah, it's like if somebody's not touching you appropriately or I guess touching you inappropriately, you definitely need to speak up because it is there's so much more to life. And it's so ridiculous that people would really try to taint these young minds when kids deserve a right to be kids. Like tainting grooming. And we'll talk about that part. I know, I know, yeah. I, I know that part really bothered you. Well, I didn't say anything, so I don't know if it bothered me. I didn't like the word I was being worked. Um, I didn't like that part at all. It's like, like, dang, like that's so rough. Like manipulation and uh, it's just rough. Uh, But he becomes a wrestler. Obviously his kids become wrestlers. Um, it's just so much. I don't even know where to all, go from all here, three man. Of his kids. Uh, Doc mentioned Rock and Robin. He mentioned Jake the Snake Roberts at the top of the episode. And the last one, uh, Sam Houston, whom Which, you know had great talent. He had the look. Mm-hmm. He had the athleticism. Right. He could work in the ring. You know, he didn't really get that far in WWE, but he and at one point, all three of. Uh, Grizzly Smith's kids were in WWE, which is another interesting factoid. Mm-hmm. Uh, but of course, there was a fourth one, um, Richard, who did not right. get into the he wrestling like, business, who that. also, during the episode two, uh, it was revealed that he was given up for adoption as well, too. Mm-hmm. But how apropos that he was given up for adoption, but he was the one who stayed by his father's side at his deathbed, which is like at ridiculous. The end. Yeah, I think they all had their own issues with them, obviously being given up for adoption, Jake looking for approval, obviously. Well, it touching. wasn't approval initially, and then it just came to, well, I'm just going to do it because it pisses him off. Well, no, he said it. He said, I wanted to hear the old man say, I'm proud of you. And and I, I think a lot of a lot of kids want that from their parents, like, hey, um, but he he would tell other people that he was proud of Jake, but he wouldn't tell Jake directly. And this could have been his way of hard parenting to make sure he didn't rest on his laurels, or it could have just been a matter of him just being a jerk. I mean, yeah, I'm going to lead more towards the latter. Cause I mean, honestly, the only reason I wouldn't lead to the latter is because the fact that he was telling other people that, you know, his, his children were doing good. I mean, which means like in a sick, I guess, perverted way, he was proud of them. And this could have been something that was passed down where his father or his mother or somebody in his life did the same thing to him. Usually that's how it works. Not saying that he shouldn't have broke the cycle, but unfortunately he did not. Um, But that still doesn't, you know, excuse some of the behavior of the kids. Because obviously, even though they have had a hard. And we kind of glanced over this other point too, and I'll let you continue was no, the no, fact no. that Jake did get fired from several promotions due to his father's uh, poll with some of the uh, promoters. So I mean, that, that's why I'm leading more towards the latter because I'm like, he really didn't want him to get into the rest of his business at all. So he basically tried to, as Doc liked to say, hamstring his career. Maybe maybe at the time. It was, a, again, I don't know. I didn't see Jake early in his career. Maybe he was trash. Is it possible? 
I mean, come on. Is it possible that maybe Jake in the beginning wasn't taking it seriously? He was trash. Dad was like, you're not going to you ain't gonna tarnish my mediocre name. Not great name, but mediocre name because I like little well, kids. He well, he didn't use the name. Like, the people backstage. Hey, was, but yeah, yeah like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Look, we're talking about the people backstage. because That's who he was talking to. He was talking to the people backstage. <laughs> like, hey, the kids just don't got it. Get him out of here before he ran. To, ran he reduces my already tarnished name further. Well, he doesn't believe that his name was tarnished. He, he had that much belief. Again. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that last statement. <laughs> he, they didn't tell him to his face, but behind the scenes, his name was tarnished. He, his name wasn't tarnished to him, but you like little girls, you're messing with little girls, your name is tarnished. Mm, okay. Today, uh, listen, I, listen, today, he would be canceled, clearly, right? Of course, hands down. Back then, there was no canceling, but they're, I guess, making fun of you behind your back. That was their version of your name being tarnished. Okay. His son might have been a terrible wrestler at the time before he gets the snake, before he embraces this whole embodiment of, I hate my dad and I want to shove this snake where the sun don't shine mm-hmm. and he says i'm gonna make it in this business i don't care what he does i don't care who he says who does he think he is i am i'm jake the snake roberts and that's all i got to say about that yes he keep obviously he could have quit but he didn't he kept wrestling uh obviously got, yeah and used everything in his advantage yes. same with his daughter right same with his daughter um she had to overcome obviously I'm going to say manipulation. Yeah. Um, she was manipulated in highest regard. And at eight, around eight, nine years old, that's when the whole manipulation slash grooming began by her father pretty much ignoring her, not showing her any love. And then, you know, that's when he had the, oh, I gotcha moment. And it's a horrific gotcha moment. It is. And that um, was, you know, around the time that he started to do things to her. Now, so you have the guys in the business turning a blind eye. I mean, as a spouse now, because he, he was also married at this time. And I know, I do believe she divorced him shortly after. No. So. Based on what I, I remember. So here's that story, and this is where it becomes even worse. So Grizzly dated Jake's grandmother. Sure. And got Jake's mother pregnant, who was the age of 13. Right. So that's that whole thing. And they got divorced when she was 17. Because back then, like, oh, you know... Yeah, I got pregnant. He's a, you know, highly influential person. He'll take care of you kind of thing. That's kind of how things were back then. So the original spouse, who was Jake's grandmother, or they weren't married. They weren't married. They were dating. They were not married. They were dating. So she left, of course, after the pregnancy of the 13-year-old. I don't think they got into that much detail, but I would assume you are correct. And she, at that particular point, decided, I thought she took the kids with her, but then he got them back. That's what I remember. Eventually, the kids left, but then they were forced to go back. Yeah, I, if I yeah, left my, that's I left what my happened idea. around the time of the fourth, yes. Okay. So, at some point, you got wrestlers that are aware. You got former girlfriends, and now... 13 year old pregnant woman who has to grow up now, right? Even though, I mean, I know some people are going to say, oh, it was a different time back there. We don't want to hear that no. crap. Um, <laughs> that yeah. is no excuse at all. Yeah, we don't want to hear that crap. Okay, um, because so. ethically and morally, it was wrong. Right. And someone should have spoken up. And honestly, I mean, today it would still be wrong. I mean, kids are kids, adults are adults. There's that fine line where people say that they, they like older people, but Listen, there's just lines you just don't cross. You just and that's don't one do it. Um, so he has these kids. He's got kids raising kids now, right? You got daughter, like, hey, 
don't ever touch me again or I'm going to shoot you. Yep. Then we got this cousin no. that comes over? No. Is it that aunt? Was, or? Um, no, that was, you said about Joe Lynn? Joe Lynn. That was another sister. So that's the fifth one. Ah, okay. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I thought she was a, a I don't know, like a, a cousin or something. They didn't, they didn't really. No, no, she ended up living with an aunt. Got it. That's what it was. Yes. Okay. There we go. So that. Because she too was another victim. And again, the aunt took one. I don't understand why. I mean, and granted, I know it's hard to take care of the kids. And that's what I was going to say. It's, you know, hard to take care but of the kids and all this other just, stuff. Cause, and, and Jake also mentioned it too. Like, the kids were literally being shuffled around, you know, families and staying with them for a good while. Yeah, yeah. I don't so, know. So, that's so a, you that's can, a rough so you one. you say they didn't necessarily have a stable home life. Sure. And that's probably still understating the whole thing. Right. So we get to this Joe Lynn part. Mm-hmm. And, you know, <sighs> that's a rough one. It is. So this daughter, who clearly, as you well stated, was a victim, um, was kidnapped, right? Don't air quotes, supposedly. Well, she and was kidnapped. No, no. I, I'm going to say supposedly because, or I guess would, the, the proper term would be abducted. Abducted, yeah. Because I feel like whoever had her probably had, like, like the brother said it best. She was tall. She was she wasn't a small woman. She was no. a fighter. So it had to be like one or two people that were with her. But I'm thinking after watching it that it had to have been with somebody either that she trusts or that she knew. And I um, mean, definitely stayed the latter, absolutely. Yeah. So to me, that whole thing was kind of fishy. And I was waiting for the ball to drop where it was like, hey, Grizzly Smith had something to do with it. What they speculated, of course. Um, but it's, it's also, I hate to say it like this, it also was Texas back in the, back in those times too. So, But hey, based on what the sheriff said at that little town, they didn't have anything like that going on. That's what he said. You heard him. I'm going to double down on that statement just because of that <laughs> sheriff. Man, that sheriff was just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, um, like, for real. Like, that sheriff was like... You can just tell, like, he obviously, probably, speculatively, you know, definitely brushed some stuff on the rug before because Grizzly had a lot of pull. Case in point. Sam Houston had mm-hmm. a lot of run-ins with the law. Sure. He never spent the day in jail until after his papa died. Wonder why. Right. That's what I'm saying. So I am not taking anything that Sheriff said with any type of clarity, <laughs> any type of truth. So, I mean, go through the story, man, because I mean, it, my mouth was just open no, the please. whole time no 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 we went through a whole lot of it of course and then of course they had baby doll on there who was sam houston's ex-wife and she was talking about a time where she was riding with grizzly smith and he picked up a little girl with her parents Wave, there waving and at is the parents. waving the parents are waving her goodbye allowing her to go with this monster again i don't think the parents knew and the absolute crap storm that happened after he passed it. All of this dark history came out. Like, I'm pretty sure they were, you know, I mean, I love to use the word on tilt, but like, there's only so much tilt someone can take to find out that you willingly. Yeah, gave your child, yeah. Away. And the fact that Baby Doll is sitting right there, mm. right there, and it's, Dead at night, picking up. Like, come on. <laughs> and I'm glad if, that if, if, you know, if there later wasn't, on. I mean, and if there wasn't a red flag to toss out there to challenge the play doc, that was a huge one. Yeah. Um, it's just too much. 
like I said, the, the and then later on, I know we were moving back and forth here, but later on with, you know, him bringing a girl over to his daughter's house. Yes. And Which asking you the whole, you know, shooting him with his gun. Well, no, no, this before, is, but yeah, but this is this is the this is later on, which I'm glad she did. Finally, somebody. I mean, again, we're talking about years before. About, now all of his kids are grown. <laughs> right, we're talking about years before somebody finally says, "No, you're not taking this kid with you." You know, yes. <laughs> like, you like. It, that's all it would have took because it didn't. I mean, it didn't and, like... and 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 to Rock and Robin's credit, I mean, he's talking about Rock and Robin. She, you mm-hmm. know, got herself clean because she had a huge problem with alcohol addiction, um, especially after uh, WWE folded the women's division back in the eighties. Mm-hmm. She wasn't really in the right span of mind, and you know, she's like, "Hey, I'm gonna get myself cleaned up." And then that happened. Like she's like, "No, this same cycle." It's going to continue. It's going to continue. I need to place a stop right here and save this little girl. And that's what she did. So, and that's the part that, that gets me. It's like, and it didn't seem like he put up a huge fight. You understand what I'm saying? So my thing is, had somebody earlier just said, hey, you got to stop messing with these kids, man. Nope. Like, nobody. And and if they, if they did say it, then it's like, did they say it, you know, like I just said it jokingly or as I just said it, like, you know, non-sincerely maybe, but mm-hmm. it's like, bro, why are you messing with these kids? And then the fact that parents are willingly, and I'm sure they were like, oh, you're going to get a chance to, your daughter's going to get a chance to go on the road and, you know, Mm-mm. whatever, yeah, I didn't, you I didn't know. Think that would have fly today. Are you kidding me? It shouldn't. Have, it should never have flown. Well, yes. actually, you can't say that. You can't say that because I hate to say this, but uh, there was a documentary on Netflix. I don't remember which one it was. It was a whole show where the neighbor was like, literally, not just sleep trying to sleep with the kids, but he was trying to sleep with the entire family. Um, it was really, really nuts. Uh, I can't remember the name of this documentary. I didn't even finish it because it was too weird. Um, but the parents. And this is maybe in the 80s. The parents were willingly letting their kids go to this strange person. Mm. The, the, the wife was involved. Like he, he was involved with the husband. Like he, he literally was trying to manipulate the entire family. And so it's like it was something about the 70s and 80s. I guess at that time, people were just turning a blind eye and just like, yeah, you know, like people were, were far to trusting yeah yeah and i don't know like i of course i could never see anything like that happening um with anybody that i know personally um because i know i couldn't even give a neighbor a piece of tape once (laughs) so yeah he's like who you're giving what to who no 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 you can't you can't do that i'll bring them the tape or whatever you know what i mean like yep. that's how it is you just don't you just can't trust anybody well and that um, could have been you know aftermath of what happened you know in the 70s and 80s that you mentioned like especially, in the 90s parrot became you know overly cautious right you know i mean i know i know we often joke about how you know unsuccessful the dare program was but the whole stranger danger right thing that also happened in the 90s i would say was a huge success it was a for the most part. For the most part, I would say, there, yeah, a lot of outliers into there. Yeah, I think once they got rid of that program, it kind of opened up Pandora's box. I mean, to everything. It wasn't just you know drugs. I mean, it was you know sex. There's you know, I mean, a lot of other things. I mean, yep. uh, it's probably the nineties were strange. <laughs> the nineties were weird. <laughs> yeah, nineties were weird, but we lived through it though. You know, we lived through it. Um, but looking over it, they kind of jumped into. Some of the pain also of Jake the Snake Roberts, of course, with the other kids. They all had kind of substance abuse issues. Um, Jake. Jake got into everything. Yeah. Was, it, her- it, was it was a heroin? It was mainly, and- no, it was mainly cocaine. Cocaine. Yeah, it was mainly I mean- cocaine. Uh, and they talked about the Heroes of Wrestling event where he was essentially just lying in the ring trying to make out with the snake. Which... 
You don't want well, somebody on folks, coke. Just, just just saying that statement is yeah. weird. <laughs> I mean, he's. I mean, he's kissing the snake. He's, mm-hmm. you know, gyrating with the snake. I mean, yep. it was really, really rough. It was, it was um, so bad. And um, and big shout out to Solid Monster too. Because there's something that I didn't know because I I don't think I actually watched it. But he was talking about the Beyond the Mat documentary, which is mm-hmm. you know real famous documentary. It was. I haven't yeah. had a chance to watch it yet. But he was talking about how they actually had Grizzly Smith and Jake the Snake Roberts in an interview there, and there. Grizzly, as Doc was mentioning, was talking about how proud he was of Jake's successful career. And I'm pretty sure Jake is like giving him the side eye because if he had on sunglasses during the interview, if I recollect what Salamasa said. Um, but he was basically giving like the side eye, like, you, you know, and I mean, the other terms were like, I know you want to say are bleeping. bleeping. Are you bleeping kidding yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to say it. You can say it if you want. <laughs> you bleeping my voice right now. <laughs> Helen, I see you peeking. That's okay. Hey, it's okay. hey I didn't say the words. So I'm good. He did. He did, I'm but good. it's okay. It's okay. okay. I am not Doc. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, Helen. It's okay. He said it, but it's all right. It's his first offense, literally. It's, I didn't say uh, it. I didn't say it. Did so say it's not it. even an offense. It's all right. Um, but yeah, I'll have to check it out. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. Um, I don't know if, again, he said it, you know. I, I, again, you can't, even though you had that rough upbringing, and I'm not telling anybody to just get over it, but. Oh, okay, I'm like, I, I mean, don't think you should. Be no, 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 no. Those type but of at, words. But at the same time, it's like, you, people really need counseling. Any, I think any and everybody associated with this definitely needs counseling. Or, or even anything remotely to it. Like, maybe not to this exact extreme. Of course. Like, if you're feeling this, like. Definitely get some kind of counsel. You need to talk to someone about this, folks. After this experience, oh man, you definitely need you you need counseling without question. And mm-hmm. and I'm gonna say this, but I'm happy he's still with us. Yeah, yeah, he just turned uh, 66 years old. Yeah, because again, as I mentioned about other wrestlers, um, <laughs> we're happy you know, that they're still around. Wrestling started, unfortunately, to fall like flies in the 2000s. Yeah, the drugs, the steroids, the pain the pills. road, the traveling, the pain yeah. pills. Yeah, it's, it's just too much. I'm yeah, glad. We just got finished talk about uh, Brian Pillman, and next week we'll talk about Dynamite Kid. Who exactly. read that episode? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I know we're getting low on time, and I yes, do and real encourage quickly, you. Uh, Grizzly Smith did pass away in 2010 due to Alzheimer's disease. Which was yes. of course the conclusion of the episode. Yes, uh, but we do we do encourage you to watch the episode. It's rough, it's dense, it's heavy, um, but it's dark side of the ring. We do encourage you to watch it. Um the and on we, the dark. Yes, super dark. No light side on this one. Um like this podcast and all others, you can always listen on your favorite podcast platform. However, if you're having a hard time, which we don't think you will, you can always go to our website at www.debateamongstfriends.com where you can re- listen to this episode as well as our previous. Um, but be sure to tune in tomorrow as we jump right back into the NBA playoffs where Kawhi apparently has put favors on a favorable poster and we'll jump into the rest of the NBA playoffs tomorrow. You'll hear this episode near the every other episode at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But tune in tomorrow for more news, more analysis, and the reads. <laughs>